Hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Uh, I haven't um, put any videos up of me teaching the Word in a while, and I was in the Word yesterday, and the Lord uh, impressed upon some, uh, on my heart some things, and I just wanted to share them with you right now. So uh, let's open in prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for uh, giving us your holy written Word. We thank you for presenting it to us in a uh, practical manner so that we can apply it to our lives. We thank you for opening up the mysteries uh, to us, Father, as we read your word. Uh, we, we thank you for the ability to speak your word so that the written word, Logos, comes alive in our hearts. Rhema, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for giving us your word to lead us and guide us into the actualization of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version, which I am still making my way through. And we're going to start at Luke chapter 5. Now I'm just going to read these verses. So uh, just check this out. Verse 1. Starting with verse 1. While the people pressed upon him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And as he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon Peter's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. So basically he's here, um, he sees a, a couple of boats. One of them is Simon Peters, who he knows from the day before when he was at Simon's house, and uh, healed his mother-in-law. Uh, anyway, um, so he, he pushes up a little bit. Simon is, 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 is there with his employees, and uh, they're washing their nets, and he's teaching the people from the boat. And when he had ceased speaking, this is ver verse 4, And when he had ceased speaking, so he's done, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So Jesus is calling uh, Simon into action, calling Peter into action right now and saying, This is what I want you to do. Verse 5, And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. All right? But at your word I will let down the nets. So notice here that he has asked, um, he has called Peter into doing something that Peter had already been doing all night long, and maybe even for days, right? And maybe his entire life, and, uh, and all night long he hadn't been getting any results. He had caught no fish. Now, understand that this is Simon's couple of boats, right? And uh, he's a fisherman. And later on it says that James and, and John, uh, the son of, of Zebedee, uh, were there as well. And... Uh, and they were younger. Jesus ends up calling them effectively, the sons of, uh, affectionately, the sons of thunder. So they're younger than, than Cephas, than, than Simon Peter. And uh, they probably work for him. It says that they're partners. And they are fishermen, which means that this is what they do for a living. Okay? This is their source of income, their livelihood, the source of their standard of living. This is what keeps their family afloat. However you want to look at it, this is what they do. Okay? So they're there washing their nets. Jesus comes. He, he sits down in the boat. He teaches the people. He's done. He says, Simon, let's go out and catch some fish. And Simon says, I've done this all night long and I've gotten nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. So he verbally decides to do what the Lord wants him to do. Now, there's lots of times in our lives when we have been doing something over and over again with no results. And then God comes in and says, listen, I'm calling you to do what you've already done. Will you accept the challenge? And then we have to step up to the plate and say, yes, even though I've already done this and it hasn't produced any results, I know now that I'm being called of God and so I'm going to push forward. This was a, a, it took a great deal of faith. He could have very well said, Jesus, I've worked all night long. Going out into the, the deep is not going to do any good. And uh, I'm just going to go home. And uh, he would have continued being not blessed. However, when he verbally decided... At your word, Jesus, I will let down the nets. And then he stepped into action. Verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great shoal of fish. And as their nets were breaking, they beckoned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. So, the result of his action, of his obedience, the result of him doing what he was called to do, even though he had already been doing it, even though he didn't want to, the result of him making that verbal agreement to listen to what Jesus was telling him to do and to do it was that he was blessed so astoundedly that it overflowed and caused the nets to break and caused other people to join in and receive the blessings, right? That's how the kingdom of God works. 
an eighth the size of the mustard seed grows into a tree that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Those birds of the air are people who receive the blessing of your action. Okay? Faith the size of the mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and you know, move from here to there, be cast into the sea. You know, all of these things, these are all uh, everything in our life is a mountain. It's one mountain after another, after another, after another. There's very, very little smooth sailing for most people, okay? <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and faith is what causes these mountains to be moved. So, he obeys. The blessings come. It overflows to other people, right? Verse 7 still. They beckoned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Okay? The blessings started to pour in so heavily, right? that it became overwhelming and turned into a desperate situation, right? That's how the Spirit of God works. Um, I, I remember when uh, I was asked to start playing keyboards at the church. Um, and uh, I was playing keys for the church, and I was kind of lackadaisical about it. I didn't actually have a full-size uh, synth at the house to practice my chords on or anything, but I knew how to play. And so, oh, yeah, Daniel, will you play keys for the church? And I say, yes, and I'm playing the keys for the church, right? And the whole time I'm saying, Lord, I need a music ministry. I want a music ministry. I want a music ministry. And the Lord says, oh, I've given you a music ministry. And then it, it dawns on me, uh, me playing keys in the church is my music ministry <laughs> for now. And so I put a lot more effort into it. I start to practice. I learn the songs, and I, I take it very seriously, right? But still, um, this was God calling me to do what I had already been doing. And then still, I, I, I show up, I, I'm, I'm playing uh, keys at the church every other week, and when I show up and it's my week to play, I'm a little disappointed, like, oh, i got to play the keys uh, this week. I really want to go to the altar and lift my hands and enter into worship and spend time with the Lord, but uh, I'm not able to do that. I have to play the keyboards, you know. And then after a while, the Lord says, that's a slap in my face. And I start feeling convicted because the Lord has given me this opportunity and this privilege of leading his people into worship. And I'm taking it, uh, I'm looking at it as, a, as, a, as an inconvenience, right? And the whole time I'm believing for a music ministry, it wasn't going to happen like that. I, I had to be transformed by the renewing of my heart, or by the renewing of my mind, and my heart followed suit. Uh, I spoke with my mouth and decided that I was happy to play the keys and excited. And you know what? I truly am. Actually, my heart changed, and uh, I love playing the keyboards in the church, and I would do it every week if I possibly could. And it is truly a privilege to be able to to um, to pull God's people into worship. And at the same time, um, a lot more uh, opportunities have presented themselves musically because of it outside the church. And, but when Simon, okay, and they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, because I'm a sinful man, O Lord. He fell down and started to worship Jesus, but it wasn't just worshiping Jesus because he had, he had received the blessings. He worshiped Jesus because he realized the desperate state that he was in. The, the boats were sinking, the nets were breaking, and it was all because he did what God told him to do, and suddenly he's in an overwhelming position saying, Lord, I don't know if I can handle this, right? Even with his friends around, right? Who, uh, two of them eventually, you know, they all were Jesus' apostles or disciples, and, uh, and this is an amazing thing, right? And Jesus says, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the catch of fish which they, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. You know, probably his employees, like, the, like I said. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, right? Which means he was afraid. He was overwhelmed and afraid. He didn't know what the future held, because suddenly he was being called into action, a little bit of obedience. Bam! Huge results. And then what? He, he kind of had a little foreshadowing, I think, of, of, of the greater things that Jesus was going to call him into. And he wasn't sure if he could take on that kind of responsibility. So he's afraid. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Henceforth, or from this point forward, you will be catching men. Right? Jesus stepped up his, his, his ministry because he was faithful in little things and got huge results. Jesus said, I'm going to trust you with larger things and you're going to get even better results. Now, 
Simon, uh, it says, do not be afraid. That's a little bit prophetic because when it comes down to it, uh, these men who traveled with Jesus, I mean, he denied Jesus and when Jesus was arrested, okay, we all, we all fall short. And, uh, and, we, and we have to ask for forgiveness for these things. The, the thing is, is that Simon did not really receive power until the Holy Ghost came upon him at the upper room on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, right? So <laughs> he was timid, to say the least, right? And he stepped forward with the sword one moment and then, you know, denied Jesus in the second moment. Anyway, the point is, do not be afraid. Henceforth you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. That means that they got out of the fishing business. They left everything. They left the boats. They left the nets. They might have given them away. They might have docked them. I don't have any idea. What I know is that they were no longer fishermen. They were now fishers of men. Okay? They were no longer fishermen. They decided to leave everything. So I guess the question that I have is what do you have in your life that you need to drop in order to follow Jesus so that you can be blessed so heavily that it outpours unto other people? So that your friends and your family and your associates and the people you go to church with are, are going to take advantage of... Uh, uh, of the uh, of the blessings that is poured out uh, the blessings that are poured out poured out upon you because of your obedience. <coughs> Leaving their entire family and everything is a uh, was very very uh, important, and that is the true uh, sacrifice. Anyway, I hope you got something from this. Thank you.